So, as most of you know, 3D printing isn't a thing that I enjoy. I hate the process, I can't stand it. But, I couldn't live without a 3D printer. I absolutely love them. They inspire me uh, to find a model, print something off and just paint it. If there's terrain that I can't be bothered making, for example, I like building buildings, but I'm not a fan of making all the titty farty bits like doors and all the little details i'd rather just print them off and stick them to a frame that i've built 3d printers make me do more because i can just print off the things that i'm not a massive fan of doing they just make the hobby a lot more enjoyable and if you are on the fence about buying a 3d printer i'd say get one but i'm not going to tell you that they're just plug and play because they're not but they are an awesome tool to own and use. Now this video is sponsored by Loot Studios. Now I don't do sponsorships for anyone, uh, I just pick the ones that I really like and I'm happy to do sponsors for. And there's a reason why I chose Loot. Now they offer 32mm models, different ones each month, uh, terrain, maps for your RPGs and stuff like that. And you might be thinking, Luke, oh, you, you like the terrain. No, it's not. I, I mean, I, I do like their terrain, but the main reason what I like about Loot Studios is the fact they've got some really nice models and you can print them at 75mm. They actually offer them scaled up, supported, ready to print for you. That to me is nice because when I three, the main reason I use a 3D printer is to print things bigger so I can just sit down and enjoy painting. This is a bit of a gift to myself as this sponsorship. And it's a gift because I like to just sit down and paint one model and a larger model as well because it means I get to practice things that I don't get to practice that often. For example, using Milliput, filling gaps. It's not something I do that often on smaller models because the smaller and batch painting armies of them and the odd gap here and there it blends in, it doesn't really matter. Now a few of you might be cringing at that, but I'm more about the aesthetic of everything done rather than having perfect models. But when I'm painting one large model, I like to get things done and look reasonably nice. I also like to try new techniques. Now, Base coating is something that's pretty simple, but I've never tried stippling or playing with multiple layers of a base coat before going over with a wash and bringing it back up. It's not something that I've done, I normally would hit it with an airbrush. So it's the perfect time to just experiment and enjoy yourself in the hobby. Now trying new skills on a larger model is something I like to do because you've got a bigger area to try it out and refine your skills on a larger area. So you can put this practice to a smaller brush and then try it on a smaller because you've, you've got the, you're learning the muscle memory. And that's why I like about bigger models is you can really nail down a skill before putting it down onto something small. It's sort of like learning to play the guitar and learning to play it slowly before you play it fast. It's, it's the same principle. Now with dry brushing, I haven't dry brushed anything for quite a while. Um, <laughs> so I thought I'd have a go with the new dry brushes that everybody's going on about. I thought, you know what, I'll give it a try. I've, I'm, I'm quite used to using soft synthetic wash brushes to dry, dry brush. But you know what? I kind of like these stippling brushes. They do make a, a difference to the dry brushing. It's, it's, it's a nicer appearance. I might have overdone the paint a bit, but the more I used and the lighter colours I went up with, I used less and less on the brush, and the looks got nicer and nicer. And it is a lot easier dry brushing with these stippling brushes over the, the, the wash brushes that I'm used to using. And I'm happy that I've bought these brushes and had a play and I can't wait to actually play with them more and see what I can get out of them. Now, painting bigger models can be quite daunting and there's a few reasons for it is your mistakes are easily spotted because you've got bigger, larger areas. And the, the area that I always worry about is skin tones because I'm not the best at layer painting. But the whole point of this is to practice it. 
The reason I've printed it off bigger is so I can refine my skills and get better at it. The muscles are bigger, the, the face is bigger. You can practice how to layer the paints up and get a nicer look. So I rush through getting the base colors down and I, I paint everything a lot darker and a lot more saturated than I usually would. And the reason I'm doing this is because it's so big, I've got more space to cover. So the recesses are gonna be darker and I want them to be a lot more richer in colour. It is fantasy. She does look a bit like the Hulk at the moment. Um, so I bang the wash on and get that ready to start the layering process. Now I don't usually water my paints down too much. A while ago, I wouldn't have watered my paints down, so it shows how far I've come. Um, I'm now using wet palettes quite regular because it keeps the paint wet for longer but I'm also finding it's keeping a nice amount of water in the paint and it makes it easier for blending and I do add quite a bit of water now to my paints. Now the biggest learning curve to layer painting that I struggle with the most is realising that how much the colours change once they dry. It can be two or three shades different sometimes and when it dries it blends in you can hardly see the difference. Now this is different colour on colour. It can also depend on how much water you've got in or not, how strong the pigment is and what paints you're using. But all I do is I just get three greens that are relatively close to each other and then I highlight with a cream and I blend them all together on the wet palette. And I just work my way up. I think I did about four or five colours working up and I've really enjoyed this process. And if you've not tried doing anything like this, I encourage it. It is fun. It's just sometimes you think, oh, if, if I go up with this next shade, is it going to be too bright? And the answer is I don't think it can ever get a bit over the top. I mean, for me, I was panicking a bit with this last highlight on the face. But out of all the model, I think it's the best face I've painted ever to date. So it's always good to push yourself and try new things. I mean, you don't have to always try new things. I'll always go back to the Sharpie just because I'm comfortable with it, but I should learn to edge highlight with a brush. But just look at how easy that is. So anyway guys, this has been a very self-indulgent video. I just wanted to paint this model and I have done and I've really enjoyed it. I've learned something a bit new and that face for me is the best face that I've ever painted and to some people that might not be that great, but to me, I'm pretty proud of that. And I'm happy that I could just sit down and paint this model. And I really do advise people to just sit down and paint a large model every now and again. So guys, I hope you've liked this video. I've really enjoyed doing this. This is a bit of a personal passion of mine, is when I sit down to do some painting, I like to sit down and paint something pretty big, okay? I always get itches to paint something and I don't normally get an itch to paint something at standard scale. If I wanna just sit and paint and enjoy myself, I wanna do something pretty big like this. Now the problem I've always had with that is when you go online and you'll go looking for these larger scale models, there's something you might like or it might have a cast to order sign at the side of it and that might take a week or two to come. If I've got an itch, I need to do it that day or the day after I need to start the process and the thing is with 3d printing as much as I'm not a big fan of the process I do love it because it is part of the process and I know when I set that off in like six or seven hours a model this size is going to be nearly complete and I can start cleaning it and getting ready to paint and get excited about the process whereas ordering like a big resin model online <laughs> It can take a week or two to turn up and sometimes I'm just not interested when it comes. And I've got a cupboard at home full of stuff like that and I've got, oh, I'd love to paint that and I've just never done it. Whereas stuff like this, if I get the itch, I can just print it and paint it. This is what puts Loot Studios for me above most is the fact that they do offer pre-supported models and 75 mil as well. Not just, as you saw, the 32 models are nice, but for my personal preference, I like to just sit down and paint. And Loot Studios, you've got a great product. Now, if you want to support them, 
uh, especially support me, please use that link below. And when you sign up to their Patreon, that will give you loads of models a month, um, and it, it, all themed around different things. This this month's orcs, um, and you get terrain, you get models in 32, 75 mil, and uh, you also get some bits for like D and D run games as well. So it's 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 great, and they're not expensive. If you've got a 3D printer and it's something you want to look into, do check out Loot Studios below, guys. Thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, um, and if you want to support me, don't forget to check my shop as well. Check the Loot Studios one first, but if you want some base materials to do all your pretty models up, check out my links below. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and I'll, uh, I'll catch you again for the next video. Love, love, love. I missed. Can't do it with hold on. Take that off. Nailed it.